So about five years ago, my colleagues and I at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative's Signal Program on Human Security and Technology began a journey to become accidental, unintentional experts in Tuchel's. Well, I'm glad you asked. What is a Tuchel? <laughs> well, this is a Tuchel. They are mud, dung, thatch huts. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This one has a conical roof. It's circular and it lives in South Sudan. So how did my colleagues and I come to count Tuchels from space? And why would you do a thing like that? Well, here's what Tuchels look like from 450 miles above the Earth in a satellite image. This is Sudan. Here's what they look like after being burned to the ground in an arson attack. Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, Central Africa, Republic, these are countries where Tuchels are the majority of homes for millions of civilians. But they're also the only observable thing you can pretty much detect with a satellite to determine that a community has been burned to the ground, that people have been killed or are running for their lives. So how do we get into the Tuchel counting business? This guy, may have seen him before. In 2010, George Clooney asked the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative, me and my team, to design and operate the first civil society high resolution satellite surveillance program to detect and document threats to civilians in real time at a real critical moment for South Sudan, and, which was just becoming a country, and Sudan. So what did we find? Well, what we found in this project called the Satellite Sentinel Project is we were able to detect attacks about to be launched against communities. We were able to document the destruction, the looting of humanitarian facilities. And sadly, <laughs> we were able to collect evidence of the intentional creation of mass graves after the reported mass killing of civilians in the summer of 2011. Now, the possibilities of this technology are obvious, but what my colleagues and I at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative learned during the Satellite Sentinel Project is we don't know how these technologies are affecting the security of the civilians we're trying to assist on the ground. We don't yet know how they may be changing the behavior of armed actors. And this isn't just about satellites over Sudan. It, it's about information communication technologies becoming an increasingly standard component of domestic and international response to crises. But we got technology, but there's some things we don't have. We don't have an ethics code for how to make sure we're doing this type of work safely, ethically. We don't have accepted methods that have been tested scientifically and proven. And we also don't have systems that have been specifically designed for these challenging and dangerous environments to make sure that we're doing this work safely and securely. So that's why in 2012, we founded this thing, the Signal Program on Human Security and Technology, because we realized that increasingly, those who are using information communication technologies in response are working without a net. And so this next week, you guessed it, we're releasing the first satellite imagery interpretation guide, the how-to, the dummies guide to Tuchel identification. And we show things like standard shadow patterns, so you can tell that you're looking at a Tuchel. <laughs> and we give examples of what these communities look like at each stage of an attack. But now for the big reveal. <laughs> After years of counting Tuchels and measuring Tuchels and learning everything about Tuchels, <laughs> I can share with you today for the first time the prototype of the first computer program, the first algorithm that we developed with our colleague, Michael Hughes, a PhD candidate at Brown University, 
to take this manual process we've been doing to detect attacks, to detect threats on villages in Africa, and we automated it. The Tuchel detector takes a process that can be days, sometimes hours in many cases, and turn it into seconds. The Tuchel detector is low jack for villages in Africa. We can now speed the decision-making chain exponentially. What I want to leave you with today, though, while this is exciting, <laughs> technology is not enough. We must innovate, we must invent, but as we do, we must ask three questions. Does it work? <laughs> is it safe? And is it ethical? Paul Simon was right when he said on the Graceland album, I believe in 1985, 1986, that these are the days of miracle and wonder, so don't cry, baby, don't cry. While that may be true, <laughs> Elizabeth Bishop, the American poet, also said, bright objects hypnotize the mind. It's not enough about having the bright, shiny object. We need ethics, we need rules, and we need standards. The people we're trying to assist at home and abroad, well, they deserve nothing less. Thank you. Thank you.